Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex. I'm in red. That's a ramble. It's in yellow and we're here from that city right below us called New York. It's always a pleasure to go out to the other coast of the United States to enjoy the meanderings of Larry Bubbles. The meanderings, yes, and uh, we're... <laughs> We're having atmosphere. I hate this phrase. They keep saying atmospheric rivers. <laughs> yeah, I. You know what is an atmospheric river? I think it's a total. Um, it sounds like something they made up. It's, I don't think there's actually rivers floating in the sky. But it reminds me of atmospheric rivers wider than a mile, <laughs> crossing you in style someday. What, what atmospheric river? That you know, they, they just come up with a term and then everybody uses it. Everyone uses it, and I think it, they love to scare people. So, does anybody drown in an atmospheric river? You would think, yeah. You would think planes couldn't fly there with atmospheric rivers, but well, I mean, you know, um, uh, can you ca- can you catch salmon in an atmospheric river? <laughs> Tuna or. 10,000 feet. So Huckleberry Finn and his pals got on a raft and went down the atmospheric river. <laughs> it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. No. You know, no, I'm, I'm amazed. But it has been wet, I will say that, for the past month. So. Yeah, so. And that wetness is, uh, is a good thing. Yeah, it's better uh-huh. than drought, right? Well, you get both out there. That's the problem. You know, we do. I, I, was I mean, reading, you know, twenty-five percent of California is desert. So. You know, it's like um, uh, California is ground zero for plagues. You know, the only thing you're missing now are locusts and frogs. Yes, we got it. What we got? Earthquakes, or atmospheric rivers, fires. <laughs> <laughs> It just Somebody goes. said, "Who was it? Adam Carolla?" Said everything in Cal- everything was burning except the homeless one year. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. So how you been, well, Larry? Well, how about New York? Oh, I thought oh, the oh. East Coast was getting hit by some storms. Oh yeah, big storm, big storm. I think we got a tenth of an inch of snow last week. Uh, we haven't really seen a snowstorm. Well, let me put it this way. When I first came to New York, and that was in the, what was it? It was the 80s, I believe. Yeah, it was the 80s. and No, uh, no excuse me. It was in the 70s, mid-70s. Um, I see, I can't remember these things anymore in sequence because uh, I came to California in 80. But in the 70s, mid-70s to late 70s, I lived here in New York, and every winter... Every single winter, there was a storm. You know, we had snow piled up so high that when they, you know, t- took the uh, uh, snow plows and plowed the streets, at the end of every street was like this mountain of snow. And now... Yeah, it, yeah, it, that, uh, that must look pretty amazing in a city, all the tall buildings with snow. Yeah, but you expected that in New York, you know? Uh, and and then, all of a sudden, now, there's nothing, no snow. We had a little snowstorm, we had some flurries, and uh, Marjorie and I run to the window and go, look, flurries. And then that's it, you know? And then we look the next morning, and there's no snow on the ground or anything. It's all melted and gone away. So we really don't have that kind of uh, weather problems that we once had here i mean i just looked upon winter oh hey winter is coming we're going to be up to our asses in snow and uh now here what how many years later uh 30 years later there's no snow Hmm. the whole weather has changed i'm sure that winter is going to be like florida pretty soon (laughs) 
Yeah. New York, when it's hot, must be miserable. Well, <laughs> you know what it is? I can never go out now. It's either too cold or it's too hot. You know, you go out on a hot day in New York City with the sun radiating off the pavement, and there is nothing in the world more arduous than that, you know? Uh, and it's humid. That's the worst part about it. If it weren't humid, I think we could we could survive it okay. But you know that song, Summer in the City by the Love and Spoonful? Yeah. And you know that beginning, that da 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 you know. Uh, that sound, that, that musical phrase, feels like the weather in New York City on a, a exceptionally hot day and that's you know it's 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 uh it, it's it's pretty uh how can we call it daunting so that, well i hate uh, i trust your place has air conditioning i have one air conditioner well two air conditioners well three air conditioners <laughs> but i have one major one in the bedroom and that one we turn on and it because i have an electricity problem in this apartment if I plug in too many things, everything blows. And then oh. it's not here in a fuse box, right? If that were it, then no problem. But no, it's downstairs in the basement, a master uh, switch or whatever that goes. And then I got to call the uh, super. Uh, and if it's in the middle of the night, I don't want to wake him up, right? So I'm sitting here without lights until we get up in the morning. So what you, you can't do is you can't blow those fuses. So I've got the, the air conditioner and a long cord going all the way from our bedroom in this rather huge apartment into the uh, um, dining room where there is a plug that is on a different fuse downstairs. And so we use that to really... Uh, take care of most of the house. You know, we turn it on full force, open the door to the bedroom, and it takes care of m a lot of the area in there. It doesn't take care of the living room or anything like that. But we got rid of the uh, of the um, uh, air conditioners in the living room, mainly because the guy who owned the place took them. Uh, but that was fine with us. We just haven't replaced them because come summer, we only live in the bedroom in the back part of the apartment. So, yeah. You got the world's largest apartment. It's amazing. Well, yeah, but I mean, we don't have the world's largest uh, um, electric situation. I mean, the, the electricity should be completely rewired in this uh, apartment and in all the apartments so that you don't blow fuses. You know, if Marjorie turns on the microwave, she did this when we first moved in, and then she goes over to the toaster and decides to make some slices of bread, she blows a fuse. You know, I never. You see, I have fuses here, and I never understood what they are or how electricity works. But well, yeah, I, don't I know understand. if I turn on too much stuff, it'll blow one out. Yeah. Do you have one of those screw-in fuses? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like you really the do. Glass fuses you put in. I used to have those in my apartment in San Francisco, and I used to have to go down to the basement and replace the fuse, and you, then you got to figure out which fuse it is. You, yeah. You, you have to. You have to look and see which one's blown. Uh, the more modern version of that is a is a uh, what do you call it a, a fuse box kind of a box that has switches on it, and they kind of if they're overloaded the switches just go off and you just got to go over and reset them. Okay, in our case, the guy who had this apartment had his brother-in-law do the uh, electrical box or we call it a fuse box, and it doesn't work. I mean, I can do something like turn on the microwave and turn on the uh, the toaster, and it doesn't like blow the switch for the toaster or the microwave or this whatever line it's on. It goes all the way downstairs and flips off the one on in the basement, and I don't understand that. So you know, I I probably have to go out and get an electrical guy to come in and look at it. You know, and and the apartment house isn't going to do anything about it because they don't do anything about anything. So no, they're not going to help you at all. <laughs> no, no, especially with what we're paying for rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although we have a very good uh, um, um, 
what do you call Super, who is very good to us because every year we tip him nicely and, you know, we have a good relationship with him. And I don't think they've ever told him treat these guys like shit. So he will do anything for us he possibly oh, can. Good. But when I say, like, we have a water problem here. You ready for that? We're on the eighth floor. So by the time the water gets here, it's just a drip. So, you know, I mean, when we take a shower, it takes forever for the, uh, for the what do you call it, to turn on, the uh, shower to turn, the hot water to turn on. Ew, uh, that's yeah, bad. Yeah, so we, we got to turn on the shower, and then we go away for about a half an hour, and we come back, and it's hot, right? <laughs> And, and and in the kitchen, in the kitchen, when I go for cold water, hot water kind of has somewhat pressure. Cold water, hardly any pressure at all. So, I mean, it's like, it's, and I, then I've asked my super any number of times, what do we do about the, the water? He says, ah, that's just the nature of the building. Well, yeah, but, you know, I live up on the top floor, which has a nice view and is probably the most let's put it this way, not expensive apartment in the building, but certainly the most uh, wanted apartment in the building. This and the one on either side of me, okay, uh, are probably the most, uh, the ones you could rent them the most for if I wasn't here. So uh, you'd think they would have done something about the water pressure, and they don't. And I asked all my neighbors, how's your water pressure? Oh, it sucks. So, you know, I live on the top floor of an apartment building in New York City that goes back to 1900, so I understand why there's no pressure, but I also don't understand why you don't put in equipment that will create more pressure, you know? So, you would think, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm dealing with landlords that really don't give a shit, all right? And they're renting some of these apartments out for eight, seven thousand dollars a month okay jesus really wow yeah. that's worth well i mean you know i've got 2500 square feet and they've got 2500 square feet too i'm simply paying like 500 dollars a month because of a court action in which the judge said i'm putting the you know the uh, the rent back moving the rent back to what it was in 2003 so i got this deal all right so that's great, you know, live with it. But uh, there, there are people in this apartment ha house that are paying seven, eight thousand dollars a month. The people right next to us are paying seven thousand a month, and they refurbish the entire apartment themselves to the tune of a hundred thousand dollars, and they're paying seven thousand a month. All right. So. Everyone, everyone in New York is so rich. Well, they're not rich. Well, I mean. You can't afford to live in New York if you don't make a decent amount of money, you know. So you got to make a quarter million probably to live there. Yeah, well, I mean, this the rent on this apartment is listed at uh, 22, 22, $22,025 a month. Not, not bad for Manhattan, okay? It would still be a great rent. But if I don't have to pay it, I ain't going to pay it, you know. Right. Uh, um, but the judge who who told the, the landlords that they had to roll it back as they were being deceitful and fraudulent and everything else, that they had to roll it back, is the same guy who lorded over the Trump trial here in New York that just awarded, he did, that judge awarded uh, uh, the state, uh, was, was it $355 million? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my judge. That's the same really? judge. Wow. The same judge, Judge Angoran. Angoran. Angoran? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do it fast, Angoran. But it's Angoran. Uh, but it, and, well, he, did, he did good for you. Well, he didn't do good for me. He did good for the guy who was suing us and the landlords. Okay. Uh, he voted in his favor. That then... Because he said the rent on that apartment now is five hundred dollars and seven cents a month. When he said that, uh, it it was a good deal for us. So I can't really yell and scream at him. All right, you know. But there was never anything for us. All right, we just happened to be in the crosswinds of this whole fight between he and the guy who 
rented the apartment and then leased it out to us. All right, so uh, it, it's, uh, it's such a long, involved story. I don't even want to go into it anymore, you know. Well, yeah, it's amazing how many years it took. It took that and about $140,000 of our money to get the $500 rent. And that wasn't by any doing of our lawyer. I wish it were better than that. But it was because the judge just got... Well, what happened was the judge in the case... And Gordon, he got threats from the landlords, from the, from the one of the landlords, and he the threats were, oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna push you out of uh, out of out of being a judge, and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that, and finally he the, and Gorin complained to his lawyers, you know, same thing that he told the Trump lawyers, you know, put a harness on your on your on your client so he did and then the guy still wrote one more letter <laughs> one more email well, and, threatening a judge yeah. does not seem so, like a good so, legal maneuver and, and the reason I'm talking about all of this is because in the final judgment he takes a whole paragraph to say in the you know for transparency I want to tell you what happened and then he, he lists all these things that the landlord had done in sending him emails threatening him and his assistant uh and um he then said i just want you to know my judgment has nothing to do with this but it's in there okay it's baked into the into the final judgment and then he fi did a final judgment that i'm rolling the rent back to the price that it was in 2003 well that affected us okay and we did nothing we didn't we if we never went to court we would have still come out benefiting that way so but uh, yeah he uh, the, the the landlord i don't know he the, he just the guy wouldn't shut up you know and it was a real real problem for uh, for them so i mean they they got themselves in this mess but it's in the if you want to go find the court document somewhere you will find in the ruling that specification so anyway that's how we are here in our little apartment of uh how many rooms something like 11 rooms um we we have a we have a foyer here that is so big you could move into it as a studio apartment okay <laughs> I mean, that's, the, you know, how many feet, square feet is your apartment? Do you know? Probably 400, 450. Yeah. So it's about, a, I, you could put maybe five or six of your apartments yeah, yeah. in this apartment. So That's better than a house. Uh, it is. Many houses are somewhere around 2,000 square feet, if you're lucky. Oh, I know a lot of houses, 1,500. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's it's amazing. I mean, we we kind of... It's a fluke that we lucked into this, but then again, it costs us $140,000 to get $500 a month rent. So start prorating that, and it's not as cheap as you think. I think our rent, I figured it out to come to $1,800 a month. Mm -hmm. So, But that's still, in New York, that's cheap, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. There was this guy who used to go around doing things on YouTube about apartments in New York City. Oh, here's this apartment. What, did, what does it cost a month? And on the average, if he found one that was like 2000 a month, he'd go, this is really cheap because if two people move into this apartment because it's got two bedrooms, that's only $1,000 a per... That's how he was parsing it because the prices had just got so out of, out of range. And the average apartment in New York City now will cost you, what do you think? I would guess uh, four thousand. Try five thousand. Jesus. Actually, I think it's fifty-two hundred is the average. Yeah, that's definitely worse than here. Well, you know what happens to poor people? What happens to the elderly? Where do they go? You know, they can't afford to live in New York City. I mean, if I didn't have, if I suddenly had to pay uh, five thousand dollars a month rent here, uh, even though I have some money coming in and I could afford it and whatever. I would move out of New York City. I just move somewhere else where it's a little bit cheaper to live. You know, so a lot of people are leaving New York City for that reason. It's just too expensive to live here. 
I would think so. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how much? Well, what kind of rents do they have now in San Francisco? I imagine they're approaching that. You know. There's a, actually they've come down. A lot of people left here, so now you can get you can get a one bedroom for twenty seven. Really, 3, that's 000. good. That's good because you remember my apartment in the marina. I yeah. had I had two of them. That was great. One yeah. I used as an office, and one I used as a uh, as a living space. And uh, it was, um, uh, gee, I paid, how much was I paying for, for the first one, the one that was my apartment that I was, you know, living in at that point was like 1500 a month. Wow. And, and that was expensive, right? And then the, the, time, sec- yeah. the second one cost something like $2,300 a month. So my rent was coming to something like, I don't know, know, about 4,000 for the two of them. But, you know, those were in the days when I was making fuck you money, so. (laughs) Must have been great. It didn't really, it didn't really matter. And the reason why I moved in and got got another apartment was right across, we had like a fire escape, but we had, you know, like a, a a ramp that went from one apartment to the other. And uh, I think you may remember that. And you would walk, yeah. you would walk across it. So the two apartments were kind of linked to each other. I could just walk across this little, you know, uh, fire escape thing, and uh, and go over to the other apartment. And it was you could uh, write that whole expense off as an office. Well, one of them was just completely written off on taxes because that's yeah. all we used it for. We used it for a studio, as you remember, and then we used it as a, an office for, you know my people to work in and it was uh, it was terrific you know and then i could go over to the other place and get away from it and not have to deal with the with the business part of it so that was very nice that's when i used to be a big shot yeah. <laughs> when radio ruled the airwaves my favorite movie the roaring 20s jimmy cagney is shot by none other than humphrey bogart and he stumbles down the street onto some church steps where he collapses and dies. And as he's being cuddled in the hands of his, uh, or in the arms of his loved one, embraced in the arms of his loved one, a cop comes along and said, who was he? And she says his name. And he says, what did he do? And she looks up at the cop and says, he used to be a big shot. <laughs> and every time I think of my life, I always I keep hearing her saying that. He used to be a big shot. Yeah. And that's is that the last line of the movie? That's the last line of the movie. Well, that was in MG in uh, Warner Brothers movies, it was always the last line that you remember. Is this the my mother of God, is this the end of Rico? <laughs> the end of Rico. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I was a fugitive from a chain gang. The last line is, she says, how, how are you going to get along? How are you going to live? Because he's escaped, you know. And she, he goes, I steal. And that's the last line of the film. The last line of those films, were you could just hear the last line, and it, you, it encapsulated the whole movie, you know. That might be a good little book, you guys, the last line of movies. Well, not all of them are that good. You know, like, for instance, do you know what the last line is in uh, Maltese Falcon? Uh, no, I should, but I don't. Well, they say, you know, these are the things that dreams are made of, but that isn't the last line. The last line, I think, is from maybe Ward Bond, who's talking with Humphrey Bogart when he says that. And the last line is, Huh? <laughs> so I'm telling you, not all Warner Brothers movies had great final lines. So. Well, I just saw a Doctor Strange Love. You know what the last line in that is? Oh, wait a minute. I used to know. I used to know. Well, what was it? Peter Sellers gets out of the wheelchair. Oh, yeah. Mind pure. I can walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but then they will meet again. Don't know when. Don't know up. when. <laughs> That was a very famous song during World War II. That was the uh, the song everybody listened to and sang and so on uh, about the war. 
was sung by Vera Lynn and a major hit called We'll Meet Again. Don't know where, don't know when, but we'll meet again some sunny day. Da 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 da. And uh, she became. There was much more optimism to the world then. <laughs> well, she was kind of the Kate Smith of England. You know, Kate Smith was known for what God bless America. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was known for we'll meet again, you know. But anyway, hey, listen, uh, we've run out of our normal time. So uh, yeah. let's uh, do this again next week. How's that, Larry? Sounds good. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, yeah. Oh, and that's Larry. Hold on. Turn on the lights. There we go. Okay. Now I'm fine. I look great. Mm, don't I look? Mm, don't I look healthy? I look good. I look great. I got some blood tests back today that weren't so good, but you know what the hell? I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, I just want to make sure of something here uh, because I want to make sure that the. Uh, um, that I have the right to virtual background settings going. Yeah, they are. Okay, so we're fine. All right. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, no, I uh, I got my, I, well, I, uh, uh, I'll tell you this in advance, okay. So what happened was, as I, you know, I went for my normal yearly, this was like a couple of yearly, blood tests and stuff like that from the doctor. And I get a call from him today and he says, well, I got your blood test back, and uh, there's a little problem here. He said, uh, I, I want you to go see a hematologist. I think you might have leukemia. <laughs> Excuse me. He thinks I might have what's called CLL, which I won't even pronounce it for you because I'd screw it up, but it's, it's a form of leukemia. And he said it's very light. He says, I, if, if it is, if it does, if that's what you have, he said all the indicators are it's very light, and they're probably just going to take a watch and wait uh, situation where they'll just keep you on tap and look at you and whatever. So needless to say, he, he said, if you want to find out more about it, look online. So my, all the hues that I've been looking online for medical problems that I have, uh, maybe I've been doing the right thing, okay? So he says, just I, you know, do that and uh, call the... Uh, Call this doctor, whatever. And first, first of all, this was the funny part. He says to me, he says, um, uh, uh, "Here, call this doc this this number and ask for Doctor Blah Blah Blah." And I went, "Oh no!" I said, "Nah." -uh. I said, "I had a run in with this guy, and he was terrible. This was a guy who never, you know, took about eight pounds of blood out of me, and then didn't call me to even tell me how the blood test turned out." Not even that, you know. So I heard nothing about it. So you assume if you didn't hear anything. And then, then I got a call from his nurse, and she said, um, this was about two months in, said the doctor would like to see you for a follow-up appointment. And I said, is it necessary? She says, no, we're just going to draw some blood and just uh, do a, do a follow-up. And I said, a follow-up to what? You never told me what the other blood test turned out to be. She said, well, if he never called you, it probably wasn't anything. There wasn't a, there. There wasn't anything there, and I went. Well, that's nice. I'd like to hear that from the from his mouth as well. But anyway, he gave me that number, and I went. You know, give me a break, okay? Go screw yourselves. I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't want to see this guy again. So he gave me the name of somebody else, and it was at Mount Sinai, which I like because I can always check on my blood tests on the my chart and things like that. And I call over there, and they won't even make an appointment with me unless I send them all the information, the blood uh, workup that the doctor did, and his notes. Okay, so I call my uh, so I then I call my doctor and tell them to send it to them, and originally they send it to the wrong fax address, and they send it to the right fax address, and they still haven't gotten it over at Mount Sinai. So as of late today. There was no sign of it at Mount Sinai, and they sent it a second time to make sure, and uh, I haven't heard anything from them. So anyway, what I might have is what's called CLL. It's a form of leukemia, and uh, uh, the, the uh, 
what is it, the rate of, uh, of death, the death uh, prognosis on that is five years or more. Okay, so, you know, something else is going to get me first. Anyway, so that, that was my, uh, my big thing for today, and I still haven't gotten to talk to a doctor yet. Now, these were the same doctors I talked to many, many months ago when I went to the emergency room for all that other stuff, and then they thought there might be something wrong with my lymph nodes, so they sent it over to these people, and these people looked at it and said, we don't see anything that concerns us. Uh, we, you can't make an appointment. You know, imagine a doctor you can't make an appointment with unless he's sure you might have what you think you have, rather than just being able to go to him and have him explain it to you or something, you know. But anyway, so I, I may have leukemia, and that may be what kills me, all right? Meanwhile, I don't have any of the symptoms, which are night sweats. I don't have those. I don't have um, or some of the other uh, things. Uh, there are a whole, a whole list of things, and none of which I have, okay? So... Apparently, I, if nothing, if I do have it, uh, it's in a watch and wait thing, and they see every th three to six months and check you out and keep watching and waiting just in case it gets worse. And some people it never gets worse. This one guy I saw, one doctor I saw on uh, YouTube talking about it, said he had one person who had this, and 50 years later he was still alive and never had any advancement in the system. So. Anyway, that's that's the uh, that's that's the story of my life. Anyway, we have some people waiting to come on here. Not many, but we have some, including a new person. Uh, here's uh, Jeff Stein is there, and um, let me see here. Uh, 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 Josh Wheeler is there, and uh, somebody new who lives up. John Ewing. Let's see your picture, John. John, are you there yet? Sometimes people walk away from their there he is there he is hi john how are you excellent how are you doing tonight yeah. you're up in nevada that's correct nevada yeah i know where that is because i'm from marin county i know you are yeah how long have you lived in nevada uh 30 years 30 i came years. over from san francisco in the 70s oh okay all right that's good i came went over to marin in the 50s I know. Yeah. I almost think I know where you live, but I'm not sure. Where where where, where do you think I lived? Lucas Valley? No. No. Okay. No, I lived uh, I lived up on uh, I lived in San Anselmo. Okay. Yeah. Uh the Lucas Valley, it's funny. There is a road in Lucas Valley. There's Lucas Valley and there's Lucas Valley Road. Now, where do you think uh Industrial Light and Magic is? The company that did the special effects for Star Wars. It was on Lucas Valley Road, but the road was not named for George Lucas. It was. You know that um, I actually worked for Lucas in the corporate dining room. Oh, really? Uh, years years ago, and I had to take care of the um, employees in the big room, and then I had to take care of him in the uh, private room, I... and it was uh, highly stressful. And I, I was eliminated from I there, had been so. in that restaurant, in that cafeteria, or whatever yeah. it was, you know. And it was I, a tough I, ask. And I've, 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 a, I've eaten there, too. It was very good food. Yeah, no, they, they grew their own stuff on the property, and um, yeah. it was quite an adventure, we might say. And the thing <laughs> I was amazed by, they have this, they have this amazing library. Uh, you know, the big circular library they yeah. had with the, I think yeah. there was even a dome on top of it, a Tiffany dome, I, if I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I was over there. Dirt. I was over there once uh, as just somebody brought me over there to hang out and see the place and so on. And the other time I went out, I went over to uh, um, uh, Skywalker Sound, which is on the same property, to do some mm -hmm. audio for a movie. Uh, nice. That was, well, it was a temporary uh thing to be put in place while they made the movie and had to make it work and I was being a talk show host and bring uh, a porn no well where'd, ah. you, where'd you get porn out of that I'm kidding I'm kidding God God damn you so serious huh uh, no but no it was uh, in fact I'm trying to remember the name of the movie now it was uh, produced by directed by uh, James Cameron's ex-girlfriend um, and um, uh, I did this uh, this temporary track, and then when they got it, 
they said, Paul, that was so good. We're going to send it down to her and just recommend they use you. And the movie came out, they didn't use me. They replaced me with somebody who didn't even sound good as a talk show host. So that was that. Was that you know. But anyway, uh, hello to, uh, let's, uh, and join in any time here, John, if there's anything to join in on. I don't know. Uh, Josh, Thank you, Alex. Josh Wheeler, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And uh, uh, Alan W. I'm uh, we, doing good. We, we never you. ask you what the W stands for. Uh, Ween, W E I N. Ween. Oh, yeah. wow. I don't know why I don't put the whole name there. I'm not hiding from anybody. And, and Jeff Stein, who doesn't have his, uh, his you know, picture. Uh, Brian Neary just sent me a text and says, We only see Alex. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, tonight I said I was going to do this just right tonight and not screw <laughs> up. But then I forget to do that, and that's just me. But why, yeah, so why is Brian writing? Connect. Why is Brian writing you and not coming on himself? I don't know. Wow. Okay. He probably heard that, so now we'll see if he comes on. He says, uh, "I don't know that." Yeah, this is a different text. Somebody said. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you very much, uh, Brian. Uh, even if you don't call tonight, uh, yeah. As somebody else, Charlene Solis, writes, "Can't see panel." Brian G. Reynolds, uh, O.G. Reynolds says, can't see panel. All right. So uh, I, I'd like to have one night go where I don't screw up doing the technological stuff on this. Cause How about on Tuesday night? Huh? Tuesday night. Tuesdays, I'm perfect. Right. Absolutely. That was my point. Yeah. And I go to bed early and I don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. Uh, Brian says laundry. That He's got to do laundry. I thought that's what Tiffany was for. Yeah, what's Tiffany for? You know, women are no good for anything anymore. They don't cook dinner, and they don't do the wash. You know? Yeah, no kidding. Wow. And my wife, the only thing my wife ever irons, all right, the tablecloth for the dinner table. That's nice, yeah. sir. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I mean, she has to because... You know, but we don't have people over to dinner that often, so she waits until we're having a dinner gathering to do it. But uh, anyway, so well, I hope Brian calls. It would be nice if he called. He's John Ewing, did you grow up in Fremont by any chance? No, I was raised in San Francisco. Yeah. Okay. You didn't, I knew somebody you didn't... named John Ewing that I went to high school with. Wow. Yeah. but Which city they... were you from? Fremont. Remind, okay. Yeah, but, the, but, does, but does he look like that John Ewing you knew? Uh, no, that John Ewing that I, that you know was like a model. Everybody wanted to. I think he actually modeled for Sears, you know, men's underwear or something stupid. Like that. <laughs> One time. Yeah, is but, that only uh, from the waist down? <clears throat> hell, I don't know. I don't remember what the Sears catalog looked like. I loved it when they did the full body of the guy wearing the underpants and they tried to make him look so cool standing there in his shorts, you know, in his skivvies. But anyway. You know, everybody everybody in those old catalogs looks like they had the same size package, you know, in the underwear because somebody that was big, they would usually tape it backwards is what I was told. I'm like, God, that sounds painful. Fucking get the, yeah. get the picture taken care of and move on. Well, all you have to do is go ask some transgenders how you tuck, how you do a good tuck, you know. Yeah. And they, they got an answer for that one. Absolutely. You know. Hello to uh, uh, our, our good friend, uh, uh, Josh Wheeler, uh, who is there. And hello, Josh. How's your evening going? Or pretty, pretty well. You always sound so excited. How's your week? How, how's your day going, uh, uh, Josh? Uh, really good, you know. Not too bad. Yeah. We now we just lost uh we just lost Jeff. He's been coming and going. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't know. But he'll be back. Maybe, maybe he's got Wi Fi problems or weather problems in Connecticut or something. Yeah, it's probably uh, AT and T is down. Today I got on my watch an apology from AT and T. I did too. I got it I got it on my cell phone. Yeah. It, it, it never affected me though. It never affected you? No, uh, I'm no, I didn't. I did. It didn't affect me. Did it affect you? Uh, uh, yeah, it did. Oh, okay. Yeah, as I said yesterday, we we're supposed to go to uh, 
we're supposed to go to uh, our doctor, our, our, you know, to get the uh, the shots for our arthritis and hurting leg and so on. And um, what happened was um, I went to go, you know, we always take a, like a lift or something like that down, and you have to call a lift, right? Right. Well, I tried to call a lift, and I just couldn't do it. It wouldn't go. I, what's wrong with this? But it worked on Marjorie's phone. That was the funny part about it, and she has AT&T as well. Uh -huh. So it was like affecting two people in different ways, you know. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. No, that's not it. Uh, breaking news: Cops say a co-ed killer is not U.S. citizen. Okay. Uh, did you hear about the moon lander? It just fell over on its side. Oh man! <laughs> I mean, it landed perfectly. Everybody went, "Yo, it landed perfectly!" Bam! Right? And then all of a sudden, it's standing there, and it just goes. Pfft! But they say they can still get information from it, and it can do all the tests that it has to do on its side. I guess it was tired after that trip, you know. But that's what happened to the uh, Indian um, uh, lander as well. Uh, they uh, sent it up, and they landed it, but it, it fell over immediately. So I think when you try to go to the South Pole, it's not the sturdiest of... Uh, of uh, uh, I, you wouldn't call it Earth, would you? The ground, you don't call it Earth. You have to call it Moonth, I guess. That would probably be the best thing to call it. But anyway, so it, it flopped over. And I don't have my thing from AT&T, though. Why didn't they put it on my phone, for crying out loud? They don't care about me? Facebook? No. Uh, let's see here. Uh, no, Motor Trends. Uh, anything else? I'm trying to look for what they wrote to me. But anyway, it was, it was I came across on my phone... And it was very apologetic. I mean, it was like, we're really sorry if it caused you any problems. We didn't want it to cause you any problems. And uh, we hope you're happy with us and we'll always attempt to do our best. They found out it wasn't a, uh, wasn't a uh, hack or anything like that. It was just some bad code or something that got in there and uh, turned off. Uh, not everybody, because as I say, Marjorie got it. Thank God she got it. Otherwise, we would have never been able up here been able to get ourselves a car to go down there so that's it but anyway so hi otherwise josh you you're the guy who you've been checking out the news at all lately or you just avoid it like a lot of people are well i do avoid it some but i mean i listen to the morning joe on my way into work and things so i i get you know every day's news and then a lot of times when I come home, I don't watch the cable news shows and things at night. Uh, yeah. Because they're kind of, you know, silly. But well, the, the item today... I, yeah, I, I keep up. I mean, you know, I check the, the newspapers that I subscribe to each pretty much each day. So. The big item today uh, that they had was that... Uh, and this is pretty pretty funny, oddly enough. It's pretty <laughs> weird. Um is that uh, uh, no, it's not weird at all. Why am I saying that? It was uh, Trump. Uh, the judge, Judge Angoran, my judge, okay, Judge Ooh. Angoran, uh, he, uh, he made it official. He signed the, the uh, thing uh, saying that Trump owes the, owes the government in New York City government. Hey, yeah. Uh, Five hundred and what was it? Five, oh no, four hundred and fifty-three million dollars because the interest has been tacked onto it. Nice. Now, if he's going to appeal it, he's got to come up with that in order to put it in escrow or whatever they do. Yeah, with I thought it. I read or heard that if you do, you have to you. You have to actually deposit more than the full amount. You have to deposit, I believe, up to a hundred and twenty percent. Really? Why? Yeah, is, I, why, that's yeah why I heard I, that too, but I was wondering why. Well, apparently to cover, I don't know, fees or something. I, I, you know, I don't know, but if that's the law, that's the law. Yeah, but see, all these things were interest accrued sure. from the date that the offense took place. Yeah. And so they added yeah, it all up, uh, 453 
million dollars. I'm sure that he cannot. So. Hey, listen, he's a multi-billionaire. Can't he just write a check? Oh, uh, well, the thing is, <laughs> according to the Republican National Committee, he, the people of America are so upset by this that they don't want him to write a check because that's just not fair. So it would be better Wait. if the people could send their money to the RNC and they can help facilitate these payments. Do you think? That would be more fair. Do you think that if he did like a, I think he's done a GoFundMe. Oddly enough. I heard. Yes, the people love him so much that they even started a GoFundMe for him. Yeah. And if there's money left over, he can get a lollipop. He There's not going to be money left over because it isn't doing very well, his GoFundMe. I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard for me to make fun of him because I have never walked a mile in his $399 shoes. So... How could I talk bad about him, right? Right. You know, until I've walked a mile in his three hundred and ninety nine dollar Oh, sneakers, shoes. sneakers, sneakers. Or, or I, how, high tops. How dare I speak ill of him? By the way, those are the All ugliest shoes I've ever seen, aren't they? <laughs> They're very beautiful. Many people Makes like sense. them. They're he said the economy must they were be wonderful. What do you what do you say? Oh, you're back from the laundry, are you? I've been doing my laundry since I'm like 10, okay? <laughs> um, they said uh, the economy must be doing pretty good if his people can afford $400 sneakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, I mean, he, uh, he, you know, he, isn't getting, he isn't getting a lot of money lately either. He, uh, he got $9 million, he collected $9 million last month and spent twelve. on yeah, lawyers. Something. Yeah. I mean, I, there's actually a story in the... Washington Post today that says, you know, he's they're scrambling to even keep up with the record numbers that the DNC is raising in the Joe Biden campaign, that they're not even, that they're getting trounced. Do you, uh, do you think if, if Trump you know, he doesn't have money to run with, to begin with, he gets a lot of free publicity courtesy of MSNBC, okay? Yeah, right. You know, that was the same mistake they made the last time. He didn't have to buy. Did you ever see ads for Donald Trump running for president? Maybe at the last minute or something yeah, like that. I think there was a few, but it wasn't like. But he didn't need it because right. it was all free publicity. It was all free advertising. Yeah, it's moved to an internet based campaign you nowadays for sure. Yeah, but I'm just wondering if when he doesn't have any money left, can the Democrats, who are going to have a lot of money to spend on the campaign, yeah. turn that into votes? I mean,. I think they can, yeah. You know, history shows that a lot of times that's an effective strategy because what they could kind of do is they could kind of campaign upon their entire platform and message top to bottom. In other words, they can get people ready to vote down ballot as well. You know, mm -hmm. we need Joe Biden and, you know, we need to reelect, you know, Sherrod Brown in Ohio who's up for re-election as a Democratic senator. And, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, they can kind of sell it as a package. Yeah. And the DNC will have the money, it appears, to be able to run those types of campaigns. Um, and the RNC and the Trump campaign are not raising nearly as much money. And, and if they give any of it to them for legal fees, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, if they're not raising enough money to fund the campaigns... How can they give him money for, you know, to, to pay off these debts? Mm -hmm. I mean, I you know I don't know about the legality of some of that. I mean, some of me says it's their money if that's what they want to do, but I mean, how they they can't do both, right? You know, so I mean, if they want to burn their party to the ground and bankrupt it for him, I guess who am I? Well, they're burning their. Thing, but... I was talking to Marjorie tonight and saying that they're kind of burning their brand to the ground anyway. <clears throat> because they're make, they're on the wrong side of the abortion uh, debate completely. Seventy two percent of Americans believe that abortion should be legal. Uh, a lesser amount don't have a, have an, an answer, and a very small amount are against abortion. I mean, it, so they're on the wrong side of that, and a lot of women in this country are really pissed about it. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 you know, a, a John. Um, yes. Yeah, um, I'm going to assume. Let me use my high-powered psychic abilities here. I would say you're a liberal. Yeah, I would say that. You you would say that. Yeah. What what in in this company, but well, in other companies? I was raised in a really conservative family. Yeah. In San Francisco. Yeah. Um. Sometimes with the monetary things, I'm more conservative. Um. But uh, I was in Berkeley when Martin Luther King was assassinated. I was in a boarding school over there. Mm -hmm. And I had to wait for the bus to come back to the city. So I witnessed a lot of stuff there in the 60s that was kind of very challenging survival-wise. So I always have a uh, empathy for uh, people that have less. See, nothing wrong with that. And you want, And maybe you have more and you'd like to protect that. I can understand that too, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean that that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, you know, there's a show we're watching tonight. I don't know if you've seen it. It's on the Disney Channel, and it is a National Geographic show called Genius. It's a series that uh, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer have been doing. They did one on Aretha. They did one on uh, a Picasso, and this one they did on Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. And it's kind of going back and forth between the two stories. Mm-hmm. And the very powerful women, by the way, that were helping them and going backing them up. And it's an amazing, it's an amazing uh, series because it's the first series that didn't buy into the myth of Martin Luther King. It portrays him at one point as being an utter coward and capitulating with whites and wanting to do that and being having his mind changed by Bayard Rustin who told him you know you you're on the wrong side of this you got to start by you know doing a little more active uh, pro- proactive work and that's what he got known for but all along the way uh, did you know that Martin Luther King got stabbed in this thing he gets stabbed and then he becomes very cowardly for a while because, you know, you get stabbed, you think twice about the next time you go out in public, right? It's an incredible series. And it also shows the integrity, believe it or not, of Malcolm X, who has always been my hero between the two people. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it really is, a, if you have a chance to see it, it's a great series. It's just a great series. Um, but, uh, I read a thing today from uh, Move.arm or whatever it's called, and um, uh, Richard Reich or whatever his name from Berkeley was saying that um, he was so opposed to RFK's commercial at the Super Bowl, thinking that it really made uh, Trump a victor in the sense of what it was provi- pro- providing. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Did yeah. you see that commercial? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, his opinion was that uh, he's not fond of RFK. Let's put it that way. I, was thinks, never, I never was fond of RFK either. Yeah, he feels he's definitely contributing to uh, pro, the pro-Trump situation. Oh, you mean RFK Jr.? Yes, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, okay, because RFK I was never fond of either. Right. Because when I was growing up... Uh, I was very much, I, I came in, I got into a situation where I saw the House on american Activities Subcommittee when I was 15. I actually mm-hmm. went into the hearing rooms and I saw what was wow. going on and it was, a, it was a day in which they were going after a particular radio, local radio star who I enjoyed every day and they just, I saw his career ruined. He wasn't on the air the next day by the House on american Activities Subcommittee and I then remembered the McCarthy hearings, which are the most famous of all the hearings, although the House on American Activities Subcommittee were the ones that went after Hollywood and radio and television and things like that. And McCarthy was actually only rooting out communism in the army. All right? But on one side of him was Roy Cohn, one of the most villainous, Mm -hmm. horrible human beings I have ever met in my life. I mean, I I did a, a, a debate on the radio with, um, with Roy Cohn, 
And as I described it, I looked into his eyes, and I never saw a pair of dead eyes like that in my life. It was mm. like I was looking the. Vo I said, I don't think I have ever seen the devil, but if I ever do, it's going to be Roy Cohn. You know, it, it was that scary to just look him in the face. Um, and that was on one side of McCarthy. The other guy on the other side of McCarthy, one of his aides, was Robert Kennedy. And people don't remember that. And that's why I never trusted Robert Kennedy. I figured he would go wherever the wind blew. And at that time, Daddy loved McCarthy, so he went and helped McCarthy. Right? So I never trusted him. And when people said, oh, I feel so bad about Robert Kennedy, I said, well, I feel bad he's dead. I think I feel sorry for the 11 kids or whatever that he has. I said, but I, you know, I never loved the guy. I never thought he was any good, to tell you the damn truth. So anyway, by the way, uh, I've, I've been staring at it tonight, Mr. Ewing. What is that, uh, what is that picture in back of you? Uh, that's a painting my wife got in Sausalito when she was with her significant other. Uh, she told me the artist tonight because she knew I was showing it was M. Ling or something. It's a Oriental artist and it's a little child looking up into the skies. And uh, she brought that into our marriage. So oh, it's okay. Been, All right. Been in our house for a long time. Yeah. So <laughs> is, is that still her property and not yours if you ever get divorced? Uh, uh she could have it probably it's okay it's okay yeah yeah um but anyway so you know i mean um uh, the times we're living in are, are to me disgusting you know i mean there's just so many evil people in the world doing evil things and you just you know life is so short why can't we just make sure everybody has a happy life you know why do we have to? We've got this little beautiful planet, but we've been blessed with maybe the. If you looked at, I often felt, always felt, that this planet of all the planets in this solar system is the most singularly beautiful. Okay? And it's what a wonderful place to live and breathe. The oxygen is good and the trees and the, all, the, all of that. And yet we make our lives miserable for each other. We wake, people, some people wake up in the morning and say, how can I make this a more miserable world? <laughs> I mean, how a guy like, uh, uh, what's his name, Netanyahu, uh, who was named after Netscape and Yahoo, and, uh, but Netanyahu uh, he can do what he's doing. How he can wake up in the morning and, and feel good about it, you know? And how Donald Trump can do the things he does and feel yeah. good about it. And how... Um, you know, your job isn't to make other people's lives miserable. Your job is to make other people's lives wonderful, especially if you're in power. And we just don't live in an age where anybody cares about anybody else. And it's it's sad. It's really sad. You know. So uh, you know, I, am I right? Am I wrong, uh, Alan? You'll you'll say I'm wrong, right? Um, no, you're you're absolutely right. I, I missed. The past 10 minutes, I had a phone call, sorry. But you're absolutely right always. <laughs> no, I'm not right always. I, I, I mean, I, you know, if you want to know, I don't agree with you on your Israel-Palestinian thing. But other than that, I think I agree with you most of the time. Yeah, well, you can't, you can't possibly like Netanyahu. Come on. That guy, I don't like Netanyahu, but I think Israel has the right to defend themselves. And, well, they have a right to defend themselves, but they don't have a right to go in and attack other people. And I'm also a Zionist, and you're not, so there we are. Why are you a Zionist? Uh, well, because I believe, like Bill said the other night, the Jews ought to have a homeland. Well, that was, that's not the main tenet of, of the Zionists. It's a, it's a, it's a philosophy uh, that makes Jews top of the pecking order. Don't, 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 don't get technical with me here. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, I mean the, it, 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 you know... Um, Quite frankly, I never thought Israel was a good idea. I thought we should have given them part of Europe. Should or have given give them, them Texas. Give, Nobody cares they, you about should, Texas. You should have chopped out a nice big part of Germany and said, here, here's the Jewish homeland. Yeah, you know? But what? You know, you're going to go from one place where there were a lot of people trying to kill you and go to another area of the world where there are going to be a lot of people trying to kill you? Boy, that's a good idea. Yeah, people said, somebody said, you know, we're going to send the... 
the uh, high, the b most highly trained military in the world. And they were talking about the United States, but it actually, I think it's probably Israel because they train in real time every day. Yeah, but I don't know if they train that well because an awful lot I, of them are getting hurt during that incursion I, I think, into Gaza. I think they need to, I think in this war, I think they need to cut back on the carpet bombing. Uh, maybe I think they for, need to cut, cut back on the killing. It's, you know, after you've hit 20,000, yeah. that more than makes up for 1,200. Oh, I'm sure it's probably more than that because they're still throwing bombs over there. And, uh, bombs are indiscriminate. That's why put boots on the ground and let them go door to door and find the bad guys and do what you need to do with them. But leave the civilians alone. That, but the, but what, what the, one of the things they were doing, and this, this really got to me, is they were saying, and Netanyahu was saying, everybody move to this particular area because we're going we're to bomb the area. area you're in. And then they would go to that area and they'd bomb that one. I mean, Netanyahu makes Trump look like an angel to me. Makes you know? Putin look like an angel. <laughs> Come on, no, Trump, forget know Trump. That. Uh, you know, let's compare bad people to Putin. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I, I think Putin's worse than Israel, but, I mean, uh, than Netanyahu, but uh, I think Netanyahu and Trump were cut from the same loaf. No, uh, you know, uh, uh, Trump you can't compare to anybody because Trump is just purely selfish. He He only will do what's good for Trump. He doesn't care what's... Good for the well, country. that's what Netanyahu's doing, isn't he? Well, he's trying to save his ass. Because yeah, if he doesn't know. save his ass, he's going to be in jail pretty soon because there are a lot of charges against him that they just aren't pursuing because of this war. You know, that applies to both Trump and Netanyahu. Yeah. How you doing, Jeff? Jeff's just sitting back there in Florida. Well, I've been to Israel twice. Yeah. And. Uh, it's an interesting bunch of different people. And for some reason, a lot of them are not happy. Mm -hmm. And they expect somebody to come and try and kill them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Quite often. Yep. And it happens. Yeah. I think, I think if the Palestinians, and not the, necessarily just the Palestinians, but the bad Palestinians, and whoever that is, terrorists, stop walking into shopping centers when the war wasn't going on and blowing themselves up and killing people. I think Israel would feel safer. And, uh, you know, but th this war has gotten out of hand. Well, in a way, you have to, you have to, when people are blowing themselves up as human bombs, okay, yeah. um, you have to really ask yourself, why that dedication? You know, okay. that they're, will, they're willing to die and take some people with them, but they're willing to die. You know, it was like... They, I, I understand because they're brainwashed by, you know, whatever terrorist organization that it's the right thing well, to the, do. Well, and much of it isn't necessarily brainwashing. It's that they've been affected by the fact that Israel was pushing them out of various parts of their homeland. Okay. You know, That's and that certainly if somebody came along and pushed you out of your home in that in that manner, you would probably be pretty bitter as well. I'd probably retaliate like Israel's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, like Israel is doing. I, I wanted to get you going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. like, like 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 the Palestinians. Well, look, doing. I don't think any of them should be fighting with each I other. I don't like I don't like the carpet bag, you know, the carpet bombing because. It's indiscriminate. Well, what I like haven't what I what I haven't liked is that we took sides in this, and we shouldn't. But we've have always taken Israel's sides. But, but, but we shouldn't have taken sides. We have tried. Should have been the you know these two people fighting with each other, two kids in the schoolyard fighting. You should be the guy in the middle holding your hand out, saying, "Wait, wait, hold on, don't do it," you know. Yeah. We and we were powerful. We were powerful enough to be able out. to be able to do that, but we didn't. So. Is this show getting too serious tonight? Not serious. No. We don't have Phil yelling and screaming, so it can't be serious. Yeah, and and everybody's getting equal time to talk. Absolutely. That too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Jeff, you started to say why you like to go to Israel. It's it's a difficult. It's a plus minus group. 
And some of the people are absolutely beautiful and terrific, nice people. And other people are just well evil. I'll tell you something. I, uh, when I was living in New York, I knew a lot of Jewish women, because I'm Jewish myself, and I was always very attracted to Jewish women. I, you know, it's just something about Jewish women. To begin with, they give the best head. But that's another story altogether. <laughs> Uh, but that will that will make me a fan any day. But they would tell me about going out with Israeli men, and that they were, uh, by and large, the most arrogant human beings they ever went out with. Really? That they made lousy dates because they were just so goddamn arrogant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of people say that Israelis are very very arrogant. So. Did I just That's lose all I the friends of Israel I, here? I don't I, know. I don't yeah. know. I think I think that part of the world, the men tend to be more arrogant. Do you think so? Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're Israeli or Jordanian or Palestinian. or I think the men tend to be... I think they're far more sexist. I'll buy that, too. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I haven't been with that many Jewish women. It sounds like you have, so I'll have to take your word for it that they're they're really... <laughs> good at giving head why you never had a jewish woman give you head i don't think i ever i i, I kind of no that, that oh okay all right all right no is the short answer not i you know i mean i didn't i don't go looking out for jewish wi women and i've never been to israel so um not that i wouldn't mind going uh, when they're not in the middle of a war now now here um, <laughs> um uh, brian neary uh, seems to you seem to have been attracted a lot to Asian women, right? You, you had yellow fever, did you? <laughs> oh, that oh boy, if that isn't racist, I don't know what is. I, I'm attracted to Asian women too. So you know, is Charlie. What? Oh, Charlie yeah. is too, right? Yeah, Charlie is too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, did you're I missing. You're you're out dating all those Jewish women, Alex. You could be dating somebody nice, like a. A nice Asian woman. Well, I went out. I only went out with one black woman in my whole life, and she was half Jewish. <laughs> well, you get the best I, of luck, don't you? Huh? When I was younger, I did the Pacific Rim. The Pacific Rim? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Wait a minute. That, that, mean? that could mean a dozen things when we're talking about sex. The Pacific Rim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with the women, I did the Pacific Rim. I hit like, uh, yeah, yeah, just Malaysia, actually. It was Malaysia. Uh, China, Japan, you know, just like went all around there. Thai. You know what we're getting lately, and this is uh, this is very true. We're getting because there's a lot of miscegenation now. I don't. Do we still use that term? Uh, you know, people having people of one race having sex with another race, or falling in love with them, or getting married, and there are these uh, these half and half kids. Who are every, is, every one of them are gorgeous? Have. They're gorgeous. What would you say? Would yeah, you, I think my daughter is gorgeous. What? What? Your your daughter is gorgeous. She's mixed yeah. race. Yeah. She's mixed yeah. race. She's, what? 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 What is the other side? The other race? Chinese. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, you can have an absolutely mm -hmm. ugly uh, white guy like like uh, Bree there. And then uh, uh, <laughs> even even a not so good looking Asian woman, and then they have this kid that's just gorgeous and yeah. tall. Adrian's gonna be like oh six, eight five. already. She's she's not as tall as you are, and I couldn't tell that she was getting that tall because you are. Oh, you got to see the two of them standing next to each other. She's getting up there. Yeah, when I saw when I saw the two of them standing. At, at lunch the day after Christmas, she's she's pretty tall. So she took the tall gene from you. Do yes. you have um, and dancing skills? And dancing you skills. Have, oh, you can dance. Why don't you demo it right now? <laughs> <laughs> Saturday Night Live. I mean, just look at at uh, at, at uh, Adrian. I mean, she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous, Jesus. and every day she gets more radiant. You know, I'm waiting for that ugly stage, but it doesn't seem to be coming, does it, Brian? No, no. Does she know how I, good? Does she know how good looking she is? She does this one thing like the rock, you know, with the eyes, and she does the other side too. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that! Oh there, by the way, in case you don't know, uh, 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 John, 
uh, Bree is in uh, Malaysia. It looks like he's in Texas. Yeah, it does look like. It looks like a Texas. <laughs> yeah, it's got a, it's got a wheel and everything. <laughs> Texas. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, there is uh, there. What, what are you having? Show us your meal there, Bree. Fish and chips. Okay. Uh, hey. No, it's a salad. It's a salad. A salad. It looks like there's some chicken in there and some <laughs> egg. And, and what's that other stuff on top of it? That uh, yellow schlong there that's in the meal. <laughs> Bell pepper. Yeah. That is, uh, this is called a Loggin House special salad, and it's uh, it's a German restaurant, uh -huh. and uh, I couldn't get into the Japanese restaurant. It was too crowded. I got there too late, and sometimes they will let me come in anyway because I'm just one person, but today it was bonkers people, so no. Well, when you go to have lunch, I go out to have lunch, are you going out from work or are you going out from home? Uh <laughs> usually home on a Saturday. But today, actually, I did go into work a little bit because I had left uh, one of my gadgets there on Friday. So I had to go in and, and pick it up because uh, I needed it. Yeah. So anyway, you're... you're... But Alex, hmm? yeah, sorry, you, earlier you were talk, speaking about work, you were talking about, you know, how, how people get up and say, how can they ruin a day? And I... I, that really resonated with me because I, I recently switched my job position and I'm not as high up in the food chain. And I, and I, and I've got a couple people, two or three who just, I don't know why, but they just try to make life difficult and it doesn't need to be. And I, I believe we're on earth to help one another, not to, you know, try to find ways to screw, screw other people. And so I've never understood that mentality, I, and I don't get it. I don't get it either. I mean, you t the cruelty of, say, a Trump, as an example, in his philosophy of how you treat people, and um, just a lot of different different uh, uh, people that, oh, now eat nicely. You, oh, you're, you <laughs> well, okay. Uh, but no, it just it's just amazing to me that the people have to be miserable to other people, make their lives that looks like horrible. A penis you're eating there, Bree. What is it? What is that? Is that what <laughs> is that a fruit of some sort or a what called is, a potato? Oh, have you a, ever heard of it? Uh, you've heard of oh, it. Oh yeah, I've yeah, I have, but it didn't look like one on the on your screen, so even Alex thought it was. By the way, Alex. John, I have to say, he, uh, whenever Bree comes on the show, he's normally eating something. So, well, it's lunchtime. Lunch it's always lunchtime. It's always lunchtime, right? Uh, or either that, or he's taking for a walk down the street, and we can see mm. all those beautiful Asian women, you know, or Malaysian. <laughs> Malaysian. They, 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 do, what do they think of themselves as Asians as well, or do they think of themselves just purely as Malaysian? No, they both. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I haven't, Malaysian first. I haven't traveled in, to many Asian countries. In fact, the only one that I ever visited was uh, China, mm. Uh, mm. and I loved China. I mean, I as a country again, a perfect example. People living in this really what is a paradise. I got to tell you, um, uh, even the big cities are amazing because the buildings are so big and robust and so on. Amazing country. All right. And I traveled to Gulin, and I went down the Lee River, and uh, these casks, and it's just beautiful. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. And then you wonder why they got a leader over there who wants to make everybody's life miserable. Mm. You know? It just doesn't make any sense. If you run for president of a country or the prime minister of a country, don't you want to make live, everybody's lives better, not worse? And you're talking about the people you go to work with, you know, who do who make your life miserable just because they can, because they have no self-worth. So they got to make you feel that they that they're lording over you. You know, any theories on our thing here, Josh, about why some people make other people's lives so miserable? Well, that's, you'd have to ask a psychologist about that one, I think. Well, I'm 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 putting it off to small penises. <laughs> Listen, it's a good an answer to the question of why this goes on because it makes no sense, you know. 
And when you go back and look at this world and you see how beautiful it is, this planet, and that we just, you know, for some reason have to make lives miserable for people rather than make them better. Uh, but anyway, so... Um, well, and I had an issue with my with my real estate agent this past week. And um, it was the same thing. It was like, you know, an appointment was made. I showed up. The repair guy wasn't there. And then she's telling me I have to pay for it. But it's in the lease that I don't, you know. So, you know, it's just back and forth, forth and back. And it doesn't need to be that way. So, I, you know, I called a lawyer. Lawyer said, send over your lease. I'm like, okay, great. That's going to cost me more than if I just do the repairs myself, <laughs> you know? So, and, and, but her first knee jerk reaction always is not to discuss the issue or figure out what, what it is. Her first reaction always is it's your fault. You have to pay, you know? And it's like, why, why do you, I've been so nice, uh, taking her to lunch like twice, gave her a gift for her kids, gave her a book for her parents, you know? And then, then when I call and I have an issue, it's like, Oh, it's your fault. You got to pay. And it's like, well, wait, hold on. You know, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I went through a deal with this apartment for what ten years. I'm still going through mm. it. I'm still <laughs> actually going through it. You know, uh, and we thought we had it solved. Our judge, being of course Judge and <laughs> uh, Of course, this was only a matter of a few dollars. You know, uh, not a matter of. Uh, Five hundred and what is it? Four hundred fifty-three million now. Actually, every day that goes higher, it's uh, what eleven $1 hundred dollars a day or something. No, eighty-seven thousand a day. I is it eighty-seven thousand a day? I, I thought wow. I, was, I thought I saw maybe. That's 11. a lot of money. I think I'd start paying that bill now. Well, you got. He's got to. You know, if he's going to appeal this thing, he has to put that money in there. If he's not going to appeal this thing, he's got to come up with the money. He can't appeal it. He has no money. Well, if he's going you know, to appeal it, he's not going. He's going to be out the money. And if he do, it doesn't appeal it, he's going to be out the money. And yeah, he doesn't have the money. We just the rest. Uh, 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 Josh, what? The appeal does not pause the clock on the interest uh, accruing as far as. Oh really? Oh really? Wow. Uh, not, not yeah, it doesn't. I... You're right. It doesn't. And I I heard that you had to. He, it wasn't just two hundred and four hundred fifty-three million. There's an extra twenty percent or something they tack on to well, that. Well, uh, like I said, I believe if you appeal, you have to deposit the amount, the one hundred and twenty percent of the amount uh, you're charged with paying. You know, so you know. He's not going to uh, come up with that money, yeah, is that, he? That's that's what he did with uh, E. Jean Carroll. <laughs> the five million or whatever was he had to deposit, you know, six million. Yeah, but it was easier for him to come up with the E. Jean Carroll five million well, and I mean, less six so six million dollars is relatively easy, I think, for someone like that to, to get, but yeah. you know, yeah. half a billion is What are you gonna say, Bree? Different. Well, I don't again, I don't know the specifics of that case, but I don't know how he is held personally responsible. Doesn't he have corporations? Corporations are people. Don't forget, number one. Number two. But can the suit he wasn't the suit, or the, suit, the, the, suit the, verdict? Wa the suit wasn't against the corporation. Uh, some of the suits were against against the corporation, but the majority of it was against him and against uh, Trump. Uh, the two Trump juniors, you know, Trump Junior and right. well, Eric, Eric and as well. Eric they each were fined what four million, something like that. Uh, these were fines. Yeah, um, uh, but I mean. Uh, the fact is that he could very well go bankrupt over this because he may not have that money. Mm -hmm. And in order to pay it, he's going to well, have to get rid of uh, Trump well, Tower. and Well, you know. or one of his corporations will go bankrupt. Well, no, it is, but it isn't against the corporations. It's against him personally. Okay, I don't understand that. No, it's, a, no, it's a, the, the charges were against Trump personally. For mis uh, in, uh, for mis uh, uh, calculating the amount of his worth, okay. He lied. He lied, and that was then uh, sold to the banks that oh he was worth all this kind of money, so they lent him money based on that, when in fact he didn't have that much money. Well, he's so, been found. I mean, he's 
So he he oh, he has been charged, not the corporations, with fraud. Yeah. That's that's because as the officer in charge there, he 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 signed the documents, attesting, you know, that they were accurate and truthful, and he was found to have willfully signed them. Did the lawyers yet prove the lawyers that representing they were not? Lawyers representing him, yeah. So, so you're saying Trump went into the bank and said, I'm worth a billion dollars, give me a loan? Or was it his surrogates? Uh, it doesn't he, matter. If you sign the document, it's still you. Yeah, he claimed that he unless, was... Unless... He was cl unless he claimed, he for instance... He, cl the, well, he, he claimed, for instance, that Mar-a-Lago was worth one and a half billion dollars, when in fact the county assessor down in that part of the country, down in Florida, assessed it at a hundred and fifty million, okay. Yeah, I, I bet he paid them off too. Well, it was to funny. He, 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 you know, they may start going into his taxes eventually because what he would do is he would overestimate his worth when he wanted to get a loan, and right. underestimate his worth when he had to pay his taxes. Right. And never right. giving the same amount of money at the, you know, in right. both cases. So I mean, it, if if. Correct. And if you file your taxes and you pay someone to file your taxes, you sign the document. Yeah. You're still responsible for that. Yeah. I mean, I once had an mm -hmm. accounting firm not properly file my tax return. I had the same thing happen. And, and claimed a credit that I was not eligible for. And a year later, they didn't have to pay a dime. They didn't have to give me any money. I had to give that money plus interest mm -hmm. back to the government. <clears throat> I mean, happened, and, and basically anyone that you talk to says, well, there are some organizations that you can call and file a complaint and give them a bad review and all that, but they're your tax forms. You signed them. Yeah, the trouble so, is that when you sign a tax form, it's been filled out by somebody else. Cool. Bottom line is you're up for it. That's right, it. That's you know, they're, not throw, they're not throwing the accountant in jail. Although right. Weitzelberg, I think, they did throw in jail. <laughs> Well, yeah, but we're they're, not, milk. they're not for mistakes, right? I mean, you know, it, it's it, oh. unless they stole your money and embezzled it, you know, that's different. But just the fact that they're just crappy accountants, I mean, you know, if yeah. you're if you're that concerned and the numbers are that far out of well, whack, a, you're a lot of people have been thing. screwed by crappy accountants. You know, a lot of a lot of, for instance, boxers used to have somebody else doing their taxes because they were too punchy. Uh, to be able to do them, and they would uh, mis misdo them and so on. And then finally they come to Joe Lewis and say, oh, you owe the government $2 million, and he didn't have it. Yeah. And you couldn't turn around and say, well, it's my accountant's fault because the accountant never goes to jail. Right. You know. So, well, I mean, that's, that's what everybody who's never been never. in that spot tried to say. <laughs> wouldn't say never? I wouldn't say never. A few accountants have gone to jail. Yeah. but well, uh, I saw it in Reacher. Well, I saw it in the TV show Reacher. Reacher, yes, right. <laughs> anyway, hey, there's here comes the theme song. So we got about two minutes to go here. Anybody got any? Oh, John, come see us again, will you please? Absolutely, I appreciate you having me. I really enjoy you guys. Well, you wrote me and you said I I want to come on. Just if you see my name, don't get scared by it. So I said come ahead, and then I saw you were here. You were here at the, oh about. 25 minutes past the hour and I got on and told you we we're going to go with bubbles first so just stay there don't uh, have faith you know and it was yeah. good to have you here so I hope uh, I hope you'll join us again definitely uh, come back I appreciate your guys commentary yeah well we appreciate what yeah, you've you're added always to the welcome. show too always welcome wait a minute it's my show you're always welcome <laughs> thank you okay uh <laughs> You look, you look a little too much like Phil, though. So this may be the nice Phil. <laughs> this is a nice Phil. This is the. Yeah. Yeah, God, the you need nice to have Phil. you guys side by side, and you guys just debate going after it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, thank you so much to our good friend uh, uh, Josh Wheeler, and uh, thanks to John Ewing for joining us tonight for the first time. Thanks to the lovely and attractive uh, Alan. Uh, thanks to Jeff Stein, thanks to Brian Neary, and uh, uh, to Bree in Malaysia, who's currently having lunch probably around, it's about noon out there, right? One. One, okay. I, I was almost <laughs> right. 
Anyway, everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? And then I will fade to me. Okay, there we go. And uh, uh, that was a good show tonight. Hey, listen, uh, 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 Amy Manuel is next. I won't be able to say that next week because she's not going to be doing a show all next week because she's going to be working the polls. And, you know, I'm very happy to have somebody with that kind of spirit uh, on this network, okay? Anyway, she's next. Call her at, uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you Monday with the pop-up show and then next uh, Wednesday once again, once again at 1030 Eastern Time with the uh, with this program here the uh, ramble see you then and, and, and oh, I'll see you at same time same station and if you see her tell her I love her okay bye <laughs> <laughs>